Hello everyone and welcome to new discussion of uh, this uh, geographic information systems course. And uh, in this one we are going to discuss different map projections. Again it is also very important uh, topic of GIS and uh, because we have to handle different map projections. So, before we go for uh, details about uh, map projections and different map projections, first I will uh, like to discuss uh, what is the need of having different map projections, why it is required. Uh, as you know that earth is uh, not perfect spheroid and uh, though it is a 3D body, but it is not perfect spheroid, one. Second point is that each country having its own political boundary and located uniquely on the globe. So, whenever uh, we have to create a map which is from 3D to 2D and that means that a curve, cur curved surface or curvature of the part of the earth I am going to make flat and when I do it make um, making flat uh, for my own country then I want that overall shape of my country as it is located on the globe should be represented in true shape. It is a true shape and if shape is perfect then the size or area of my country will also be accurate. But if shape is distorted then area of my country is also going to be distorted. So, what, what I am trying to say that uh, though there is a map projection which is called universal mercator projection or uh, uh, UTM universal transverse mercator projection and uh, though the word universal has been used, but that too is also not universal. So, that means that since each country is located uniquely on the globe, each country is having its own width and height or uh, on, a, on a globe or an extent, then uh, each country would like to have its own uh, true shape and true size and therefore, they have developed their own map projections. Many international disputes between two countries are many times due to the different map projections which are being used by two neighboring countries. And one says that my, mine one is accurate, the others one is inaccurate and vice versa and therefore, many disputes are because of simple map projection. So, it is a very very challenging thing, but equally important uh, for uh, measurements also. So, whenever we do the measurements like length, perimeter or area, we have to be very very careful about the map projections. So, uh, right selection of map projection is very very important. Each country will have its own which we will discuss also what about the India and the, then selection of a model for the shape of the earth that is the sphere or a ellipsoid that is also equally important for a map, a map projection. So, like for example, in earlier survey of India topo seeds, we used to have a polyconic projection and we will, I will come to the uh, conic projection or polyconic projection little later, but just uh, I am using the name polyconic projection and uh, they used to have Everest spheroid uh, for this representing the shape of the earth here. Now, Everest spheroid is used mainly in Indian subcontinent. Is Everest spheroid is not used by any other one and uh, the this polyconic projection may not be used by any other one. So, if neighboring countries are using a different map projection, then the boundaries, the common boundaries between two countries, political boundaries may not match. So, the when once the shape of a boundary is changed, obviously, then uh, the length will change and problems will come. So, uh, another, another issue is because a GIS is very uh, good on handling uh, geographic coordinates in terms of uh, you know DD or longitude latitude and uh, the plane which we use for uh, you know map uh, is again is a flat part. So, that means these curved lines uh, have to be made uh, straight lines on our maps or little curve and therefore, 
the problems about accuracy of measurements will arise. Second thing is about uh, that the transformation of geographic coordinate that is latitude longitude to plane coordinates and in a UTM projection we use the easting and northing or x and y generally x and y. These easting and northings are in meters not in uh, DMS or DD. So, lot of uh, changes or transformations are required from one shape to another from one uh, curve, curve surface uh, of the earth to the flat surface and therefore, projections are very much required. Another point uh, which will come while making a map is the reduction of a scale because uh, the real world is at one to one scale and on a map I cannot represent the real world at one to one scale. So, I have to reduce the scale, I have to represent the abstract reality and therefore, in GIS we say that a, say a topographic map is also a, is a model because it is representing abstract reality. So, reduction of a scale uh, generally is required uh, to map because the real earth uh, is a one to one scale and having uh, the you know the spheroid body and 3D body whereas, maps are 2D. So, uh, you know that maps are models of reality that they are also models and attempt what we to we try to cre when creating maps what we try to represent the two dimensional curved surface of the or rather three dimensional curved surface of the earth as a flat and maps are main data source for GIS because GIS what we do mainly we handle different layers. These layers are uh, digital maps or in digital formats. Now, uh, generally you, you what you can imagine here that you are having a buyer mass which is representing uh, our globe and these lines uh, in the over or these buyer which you are having are the latitude or longitude. Of course, these are imaginary lines on the ground you do not see them except the 0 degree longitude which has been uh, put on a building of Greenwich uh, for Greenwich mean time or uh, dividing the whole globe on eastern hemisphere and western hemisphere in London, but uh, that is the only reference which we are having. Uh, otherwise, these are imaginary lines anyway. So, if you are having a buyer mass and if you keep a light source inside of that globe of wire mass and if you if you put a photographic paper here and expose that photographic paper and when you will make this sheet flat then you would see that impression of those latitude longitude will appear on this one. So, depending how we keep this paper or photographic paper over the globe. And of course, this will depend where my country is located. So, if my country is located near equator, then this way I can get a true shape of my country and obviously, consequently I will have a true size of my country as well. But if my country is located uh, near the poles or in higher latitudes, then uh, a cylindrical projection or keeping seat which will be touching equator will not serve the purpose. So, again in order to represent my country in true shape and size, I would change and I would create a rather than a cylinder, I may use a cone and that will suppose my country is located here, then I when I put the paper it would represent near true or true shape and size. Similarly, if, uh, if I am uh, if I put a uh, the seat uh, rather than making curve if I just take it as a flat seat and project on any on the location and the illumination source is inside again then I will get a projection something like this. So, this projection word is coming basically from that concept of uh, a buyer mass of globe and a illumination source is inside and you are putting a photographic paper which I am exposing and bringing those impressions of latitude longitude and depending where I am keeping, how I am keeping, whether I am folding and if I am folding, how I am folding. So, if I make a, a cylinder of my paper and touch which is touching my uh, these equator, 
then these are called cylindrical projection. If I do it as in a form of cone as shown here in the middle figure, then I say conic projection. Now, when we I say India used to develop its topoceres in polyconic, that means instead of one cone, multiple cones were imagined. And then there might be a azimuthal uh, projection which will touch just, just one part of the earth and rest is uh, you are seeing like this. You know, so in many other disciplines also like in structural geology in our sciences field, uh, we also use uh, projections which we call stereo nets and these are for uh, imagine everything is imagined that it is in the southern hemisphere. So, that is also a uh, azimuthal projection, but uh, it is uh, you know at the uh, you know the southern pole is in the or south pole is in the center. So, this seat is kept at the bottom if I want to do it. But uh, opposite to this in mineralogy again in field of earth sciences we keep at the top. So, this uh, structural geology concepts are also used in civil engineering as well. Now, as I have mentioned already that uh, there are three basic types of map projections that either azimuthal projection which you are seeing where latitude longitude will would appear something like this that the latitude will appear here as a rings and a longitude would be radiating from the center wherever I have kept. But if it is conic projection then uh, you know again uh, longitude would be if it is of northern hemisphere then this is how it will be uh, represented and uh, uh, so again my you know these longitude would be straight line here whereas my latitude are going to be curved which is just opposite to az azimuthal. And when I am moving cylindrical then I am having very good representation in form of uh, rectangles. So, my uh, longitude and latitude will, would appear in straight lines. However, if we just compare the boundaries of these continents or countries where their distortions are coming. So, if I keep azimuthal position like if I keep my uh, seat photographic seat at the pole north pole, then the uh, countries which are close to north pole will appear in their true shape and consequently in true size otherwise not. But if I if a country is located uh, near equator or something in the northern hemisphere like America then it is North America it is very well represented in this. A uh, conformal conic uh, Lambert projection. So, it is a uh, conic projection in broadly, whereas this is azimuthal projection and uh, this is cylindrical projection or a uh, somebody uh, Miller uh, who developed further. So, it is called Miller projection where latitude and longitude will appear straight. Now, again it will depend where my country is located. And uh, as you can see in the last example of cylindrical one, see what happens to the shape of Antarctica. We know that and uh, that this is not the true shape of Antarctica and uh, Antarctica uh, is, a, uh, is a continent nobody is basically living except scientist and therefore, there is no dispute about the shape or no claim or no complaint that uh, the shape of Antarctica is distorted in this map projection. So, if we truly I would like to represent Antarctica in its true shape and size then azimuthal projection like in the top which is shown instead of keeping this seat uh, over the north pole if we keep on the south pole then we will get a uh, near true shape and size of Antarctica. So, different map projection will represent different countries in their different shapes and that is the basically so therefore, almost each country has developed their own map projections in order to represent their country in its true shape and size. Two examples are here given when we do the Mercator projection this is how we see. So, the countries which are near poles will have complete distortions, but the countries which are uh, near equator or uh, you know something like that they will have better representation. Similarly, here as you see here and that in this uh, another projection mole wheat projection 
see the what happens to this Greenland part? It has got distorted shape and when uh, and orientation also and when shape is distorted obviously the size would be an issue. Similarly, see what happens to the uh, you know this uh, American southern American part and that uh, Mexico part also and uh, what do you see that again it is distorted. So, some some I say basically map projection is a kind of trade off you get uh, some benefits, but some problems are also there. Similar problem is coming for the shape of Antarctica. It does not look uh, Antarctica as we are used to or seeing its shape, but uh, those who have developed they have developed for their own country and for their own country it is representing its true shape and obviously true size. Now, more complications can be added that uh, uh, you can keep where you want this flat seat like on poles or on the transverse rather than uh, you know uh, on the poles in a normal projection or you can do it transfer putting this uh, seat or cylinder uh, in a different way. If I take this example as a cylinder then this cylinder is put like this that in the center you are having north and south here you do not have north and south north and south have gone on the sides. So, it would be a transverse projection. So, this is called normal projection this is transverse projection. Now, it is again a cylinder. So, inside that cylinder that the wall or this uh, we can keep as a so obliquely. So, like as shown here. So, it becomes oblique. So, this is uh, the line which is shown is the a line where every place uh, the cylinder will touch uh, the earth, but rest of the places it will uh, touch except on the polar regions otherwise it will not touch. So, when we project it would be so complications are will be there or combinations of these. Obviously, we do not have to do nowadays physically all this there are mathematical models and conversions are there that means, we can convert from one map projection to another. However, uh, changing from one map projection to another for example, from our uh, polyconic projection of survey of India if I change to UTM projection there might be some problems uh, while changing that means, there might be introduction of few errors. So, we have to be very very careful because these errors will basically distort the length and area and shape also of a, a may, may be a district boundary or may be state boundary. So, there might be some issues also overall country boundary will also get distorted. So, cylindrical projections conical projection azimuthal projection depending where the country is located on the globe. Now, when we go for this a conic tangent then this is a we, we call as a standard parallel which touches all the all uh, you know throughout that cone it touches the earth. So, that becomes our standard parallel and the central meridian is that which it touches the bottom of this cone and it is currently coinciding with the equator. So, that becomes my central meridian and uh, this is how this is standard parallel and uh, then uh, these longitudes are let, uh, are also shown here likewise. If it is a conic uh, second then this is how uh, uh, instead of uh, coming to up to equator it is going down. So, my central meridian is going to be like this and a standard parallel has gone up and there might be even two standard parallels. So, like in survey of India polyconic projections we had two standard parallels and uh, similarly uh, when we uh, take out the globe or wire mass out of this this is how. Uh, when this is still in cone shape, but when we make further flat it would look something like this. Uh, similarly, you know cylindrical when we uh, go for aspects normal transverse and oblique, when we go for planar aspects uh, rather than having a cylinder of the paper we go for the flat paper. Then what we are having the polar projections as I gave the example of structural geology or mineralogy where we keep or uh, other uh, projections which you are seeing oblique projections or transverse projections and other things are there. So, if we, if we uh, go for further details depending on this 
in the polar aspects that different perspectives are there. So, a uh, genomic uh, stereographic these are the projections which are used a stereo nets we also call a stereographic projection about uh, uh, structural geology and then orthographic is also uh, done orthographic corrections on satellite images are also performed. So, this is based on those nothing but the projection basically. Now, with the boundaries of the countries are also uh, uh, depicted here that if I am having a conic projection like this or cylindrical projection and then US and uh, North America Canada is appearing something like this, but when I am having a cylindrical projection I am having a very much uh, this Antarctica is distorted means polar regions are distorted, but in between mid latitude countries. Uh, um, both on northern side and southern side of your uh, equator are quite uh, represented correctly. When I am having plane projections again wherever this seat is kept or projected then on the no like this is about northern hemisphere things are very well present represented, but what happens near the equator or in or the southern hemisphere you do not have any uh, anything to see there and this is interrupted projections or polyconic kind of projections where you handle uh, like a, a peel, peeling of uh, an orange and this is what you can see here. So, then when, when you peel off an orange very carefully using these designs or lines then when you open it it might look something like this. So, these are also interrupted uh, projections are there more or less all countries would be represented correctly, but see what happens to your Antarctica. It is now in four parts which is not correct way of representing. So, that is why I said uh, earlier that there is always a trade off in map projection. You gain something, but at the same time you lose something. Again a uh, cylindrical projection in which uh, you are having uh, places. Uh, usually places earth inside a cylinder with the equator tangent to the inside of the uh, cylinder and you get a mercator projection. So, there is a, a in, universal transverse mercator projection uh, UTM very popular and uh, this is how that is uh, done like this. So, also there is called equal area projection. Uh, so, if I if I take that kind of uh, scenario again and the mid latitude countries would be represented nicely without any problem. And uh, why it is saying because each cell here uh, is representing the same area of the earth. So, it is also called equal area. However, see the Antarctica what happens to the Antarctica? The entire shape of Antarctica has got completely distorted. It looks much much larger than overall of the countries which you are seeing which is not true. So, in a particular projection things may be very bad uh, for others, but uh, if we uh, uh, that is why there are so many projections are there and there is virtually no universal map projection not even UTM is also not universal truly. So, cylindrical maps are conformal maps and they form to the true shape only to this geometry tend to en enlarge the area of land masses at high the near at the poles or latitudes as you are seeing. Examples are Mercator projection the US geological survey uses a conformal projection for many of its uh, topographic maps. Now, as you know that the curved surface this is 3D surface has to be uh, represented in a flat sheet. So, the projection has to be chosen. Now, when you do it what what the problems which we are going to encounter is the shape of a region or a country political boundary may get distorted. The distances because shape is changing. So, the distances or perimeter will change and the directions will also change. I showed one example of Greenland in one projection it was a different direction another one it has got completely different direction and the area when the shape is changing the area of a boundary will also change and 
these are the distortions a map projection can introduce. Now, while converting from one map projection to another, and these distortions are try to, uh, I try to keep at the minimum, but still there might be errors because no projection transformations are completely transparent. So, basic principles uh, uh, of these map projections that mapping applications, because this is what we are doing in GIS that applications of the earth can be assumed to be a perfect sphere. And there is a difference between a distance around the earth between the poles versus equator. Because again the earth is not perfect spheroid and that has added lot of complications. That the circumferences of the earth is about 1 by 300 smaller around the poles. And this uh, uh, type of figure is termed as ovulate ellipsoid or spheroid or perfect not perfect spheroid and the three dimensional shape obtained by rotating an ellipse about its shorter axis. So, uh, if we move that one then we will get uh, this oblate ellipsoid and that is why it is also called ellipsoid you know. It is not the circle which we will move you know around uh, uh, over this uh, north south axis. And an estimate uh, of the earth surface based on an ellipsoid provides uh, the determination of the elevation of every point on the earth surface including sea level that is often called the datum. So, in GIS we also use uh, datum and uh, like in GPS or GNSS and uh, the word uh, geodetic spheroid is used whereas I gave the example of and this. so these are also uh, called the datum as well. Now um, these map projections as you I was uh, uh, you know giving uh, giving you earlier that the source of illumination or light source is kept in the center over this biomass inside the biomass and when you project and make it flat this is how it will look. So depending where how the paper has been folded and where it has been kept. So, map projections are used to transfer or project geographical areas coordinates into a flat surface. And the easiest way to try to transfer the information onto a flat surface is to convert geographic coordinates into x y coordinate system. And this is what we do and uh, most of the time when we handle the data we display in uh, geographic coordinates. At that time it is not projected, but uh, whenever you are going for some calculations or estimations of distance, perimeter or area, then it is better to project them onto a plane and then do those uh, measurements you would get uh, the correct one. For India, if we project in the UTM projection, we get very good uh, uh, accurate measurements using that projection. So, you initially you can keep your maps in x y coordinates or in d d, but whenever you go for uh, some measurements you can convert uh, temporarily to a map projection UTM, do the measurements and then come back for other analysis. So, projection systems the basically the system or computer or GIS used to transfer locations from a surface to a flat map and projection of an image or satellite image onto another surface either a slender or a flat plane or a cone. It depends where it is located and the basic types of projections I have already discussed that one is cylindrical, conical, azimuthal and these are the three basic types of. Now a equal area projection as I have said UTM is also considered under that category where it correctly represent the areas the sizes of the sphere on the map. That means if I project my data into UTM and do the area measurements, I am going to have better accurate results. And uh, for example, Lambert cylindrical equal area projection which is specifically designed for this equal area concept is there. Then equidistance where the distance are correctly represented, equidistance projections. Example is uh, plate carry projection which we do not use in India and or survey of India 
do not use these projection and then the conformal projection where it represents the angles and shapes correctly at infinitely small locations. So, there also Mercator projections again uh, you know this uh, UTM projection is a equal area Mercator projection. So, it is a conformal equal area uh, projection is a mix of these three types. Now, the in cylindrical or conformal projection basically they preserves the uh, right angles between lines of latitude and longitude and are primarily used because they preserve direction. So, for different purposes the projection different projection systems can be employed and uh, the areas is always distorted on cylindrical projections. So, one has to keep this because you know that uh, and uh, these latitude longitudes are curved lines, imaginary lines on the surface of the globe. And if you make, make them flat, obviously they are going to bring distortions in this. So, cylindrical projections here uh, you, you would have a uh, problem and also when data from satellites are acquired, they too suffer from this. So, the many times we uh, try to remove those distortions uh, using uh, your georeferencing techniques, but map projections has to be has to be taken uh, completely differently. So the project the sphere onto the cylinder tangent to a central meridian one choice, then meridian and parallels intersect at right angles. So when we go for cylindrical projections, these conditions are there. If we go for Mercator projection and that is conformal, this is how globe would be or the boundary of the countries would be represented. The problem with large problem which you see over the Antarctica or the northern pole countries, but uh, the you know the areas in uh, you know in middle latitudes around the equator would be very. As you can see that uh, uh, for, for the same area of the earth because this conformal. So, for the same area of the earth here we are having in the, in the at this range of latitude we are having a square whereas in the near equator we are having rectangles like here and if we go little higher in let, uh, uh, long latitudes we are again finding rectangles having a different orientation so the you know the, the same part uh, same area is represented as a very large and which is what it is bringing the distortions but it is achieving very good results for mid latitude countries mercator projection like uh, uh, like for countries like india it is quite good in that sense so uh, which uh, preserves the angle this conformal projection mercator conformal and uh, of course it distorts scale distance and direction of areas distortions increases away from the central meridian and used in sailing and uh, when uh, in the ships or for the direction more important than distance. So, because they have to keep the direction intact. So, this is a, in conical projection or equal area projections preserves the property of the area and uh, on the equivalent projection all parts of the earth surface are shown with correct area. So, area is preserved here in the previous example the direction is preserved and latitudinal distances are never accurate. So, again and uh, if somebody would like to do measurements and this. So, each projection is having its own advantages and disadvantages. That is why I have repeatedly said it is a trade off, trade off uh, from one uh, transformation to another, but where you are located or for which area you are working that is important. So, by that uh, you can really control a lot of things. Uh, for conical projections similar problems you would encounter for this Alvars equal area because if you when we go for the demonstration of map projection on the software I would show that uh, how the uh, software's developers have uh, developed all these uh, con uh, transformations functions for one projection to another. Initially many many years back the you know the group of uh, scientists uh, developed uh, uh, first uh, this transformation functions uh, in the USGS later on they coded in the Fortran 
language, computer language and then now it has been, these have been coded in other languages too. So, like for example, here equal area projections typically have non-straight longitudes and may have unusual outlines. So, some distortions at some place might be there. Uh, whereas, in azimuthal projection only preserves the correct distance relationship along few lines on the map because it is just touching at one point. So, only on the few lines on the map it is good, but otherwise it is bad. So, where the that uh, seat is imagined, if you are having a second uh, uh, touch, it would be like this. If you are having a tangent touch or tangent connection, it would be like this. Uh, whereas, planar or azimuthal that is flat seat is placed, uh, placed in the contact with the globe and points are projected from globe to the seat and uh, likewise you can have a projection like this one. Similarly, in Lambert azimuth equal area projection which preserves the area but dis and distorts shapes and distances. So, uh, what you see uh, in a Google Earth this is the map projection is there, but when you zoom it and then these distortions which are coming because of curvature of the earth will not be there. And therefore, if you do the distance measurements, uh, you are not going to encounter big problems. But if I do distance measurement on while projecting in this uh, say between here to India, I may get distortions in my distances. So, depending the scale, scale is also very much important. If I am working on a large on, on a small area having large scale maps and then the curvature of the earth will not play much role and therefore, these things can be. This is what the geographic projection. So, generally and by default in uh, GIS we keep geographic projection where we keep the things in latitude longitude coordinates and uh, though it distort because as I have said no projection is truly universal or perfect. Every projection is having problem one type or another. Either shape is correct, distances are bad or area is bad or something like that. Here again in this particular uh, geographic projection or no projection, it is also called no projection in some uh, uh, literature. So, if it is no projection that means it is geographic projection again the polar regions are completely distorted. But uh, areas which are near equators or countries which are near equators are nicely represented. So, many distortions are there mostly used in thematic mapping. This is what uh, most common one in GIS and uh, what happens to the size of Antarctica or Greenland? It has completely changed which is not uh, true as if we can check in other polar projections. Now, they people have also developed some uh, projections which are called compromise projections. So, they try to balance the distortions and also make things more uh, right or look right also and shape distorted more in the polar regions than at the equator. So, that uh, this is the compromise projection which is called uh, the Robinson projection. Uh, though at the uh, polar regions you are having very bad distortions, but in the mid regions uh, it is quite good. Uh, so, again there are advantages and disadvantages means trade off. Now, we are coming almost end of uh, this discussion about map projection. So, before I close I would like to uh, mention about the, uh, the latest or new series of survey of India. Uh, because we will be handling uh, these maps uh, for our uh, build up of our GIS database. So, a brief discussion I thought would be most appropriate. So, what we are having uh, that uh, now this open series index, uh, this is the index map of Uttarakhand, but open series uh, topographic maps and uh, they are using this datum as a word geodetic spheroid 84. And this is the same uh, spheroid is also used in default by our navigation systems like GPS or IRNSS or Baidu or Galileo or GLONASS. So, it, it is conformal or it is 
uh, matches with that uh, st uh, those standard. So, there will therefore, there will not be any conversion required if I collect data from GPS and plot over open series maps. Earlier when we used to collect the field data using GPS and when we used to plot on topo sheet, we used to get lot of uh, errors, location errors. But now if we, I do it on uh, these open series maps, then that problem will not be there because one thing that they have, they are following the same datum as uh, these GNSS uh, systems are following, another one the UTM projection. So, the area issue will not come because we are not located on the uh, poles, we are just uh, above the equator. So, in that way uh, it is very good. So, open series these are uh, basically prepared at different scales 250,000, 50,000 and 25,000 and uh, they are no, these are not restricted as well. Earlier in the earlier system we used to have lot of restricted topo sheets and difficulties uh, to do that. And uh, uh, as you can see here that for uh, entire Uttarakhand it is showing also status and it is uh, all blue one are ready uh, for users whereas on the border areas or in the one in the center uh, there is some under progress and uh, situation is there. And uh, these uh, uh, topo seats if you buy open series they do not contain any grid that is latitude long grid and uh, they do not either contain classified information. Therefore, they are kept under unrestricted category. So, these are available to anyone who, who would require for their usage, maybe for development of an area or maybe for GIS purposes or maybe for some project or construction or any other thing because of no restriction and uh, now uh, using GPS or GNSS you can use the locations which will plot very accurately on this one. So, this brings to end of uh, this discussion on map projection. Again same request please try uh, to say take a map of the world or political boundaries of the world in your software and try to change from one projection to another. When we will have demo of course, we will be seeing all those details as well. So, thank you very much for time being. Thank you.